Good evening, everybody. Um, I want to welcome you all to the fifth annual first pitch dinner. Um, you know, this this signals right right around baseball season, so uh, you know it's a pretty exciting time here in Niagara baseball. Um, uh, Joe and I decided we wanted to do that this year um, because, quite frankly, we pretty much do everything together. Um, for one, we're best friends. Uh, for two, we're both math majors. We're both seniors. We're both catchers. Uh, if you see one of us on campus, chances are you're probably going to see the other one because we have all the same classes, pretty much have the same schedules for everything. So uh, we figured it was pretty fitting um, for the two of us to do it tonight. All right, I guess, um, yeah, part of the reason we want to do this is uh, to give you guys a little bit of a taste of the team. Uh, well, we're not going to introduce everybody. I guess I'll say just a little thing briefly. Um, I think that this team has as much talent as I've ever played with here. Um, we have leadership in all the different classes. I think our culture is amazing. And I just think it's going to be an exciting season. We're going to have a lot of great things to happen here. It certainly looks like a great night ahead for us all here. Um, and first on the agenda, we have a welcome from our athletic director, Simon Gray, and that will be followed by an invocation from Father O'Malley. Right, uh, then we'll get a chance to eat dinner. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so after dinner, we'll get to watch a video from uh, a, a video about the seniors, and then um, a highlight video, which I guess has been put together. I guess that was pretty cool. And um, yeah, uh, and then uh, we'll hear from our head coach, um, Rob McCoy. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Niagara University's Director of, of Athletics, Simon Gray. <laughs> It figures two catchers would make me work on my quads, right? Up and down over there. I don't know if you saw, they got me up, up and down twice. But um, I do want to welcome you to this first pitch dinner. It's, it's the biggest dinner that we have every year. Uh, as an athletics department, our Hall of Fame ceremony sometimes will, will rival it in numbers. But uh, it's really a testament to all of you and these gentlemen who are sitting out here in front of me. Uh, but it wouldn't be a baseball event if there weren't a couple scorecard changes. So I do want to let you know uh, at the beginning of the event that we have had a couple changes. Unfortunately, Greg Zahn cannot be with us tonight, so the head keynote speaking uh, responsibilities fall on our head coach, Rob McCoy. So, Rob, fresh is on. I know you always deliver the heartfelt message, so we're thrilled that he'll be able to do that for us uh, this evening. And also, Father Mar is not able to join us tonight. He was going to close, but uh, he's very sorry that he can't be here. Uh, he had a really long week. He's been traveling uh, for over a month. He was out of the country and uh, has been in California this week with the NCAA convention, which I'm going to talk about here in just a second, but uh, he does send his regrets. But uh, I do want to extend a few thank yous. Uh, one, Michelle Gabriel, thank you so much for putting on the terrific basketball. <laughs> excellent effort, thank you again for all of your time that you put in. Brianna Jacobs from our PR office, thank you for everything that you've done. And of course, Mike Jeswald and his group, uh, who always do so much work in putting this together. Uh, I mentioned the student athletes earlier in the NCAA convention, and the one one of the things uh, in the keynote that the NCAA president gave Dr. Mark Emmerich, uh, he really implored all of us, divisions one, two, and three, to focus on the athlete. Uh, when times are tough, when decisions are difficult, um, always fall back on the heart of why we're in this business, and that is uh, we're here to develop our student athletes, to help them grow academically socially, personally, and of course, uh, athletically uh, in, in chasing down championships. But uh, I thought it was very profound in a time where we're facing uh, name, image, and likeness challenges. Uh, you'll see that all over the media. Um, standards are changing, requirements are changing. Uh, it's gonna be a very difficult slog here for intercollegiate athletics. Um, but when you think about a baseball team whose fall GPA was 3.48, how about a round of applause? <laughs> A couple laughs, so they might have been on the bottom end. <laughs> but congratulations to those who brought it back up. Uh, but, but when you think about a group of young men who are able to do that in the classroom, while at the same time spending a considerable amount of their hours uh, in the weight room uh, and getting stronger and on the practice field and getting better, 
to represent the purple and white in the best way. Um, but I can also say anytime someone on our campus needs a team to come in and pitch in and, and carry something or clean up the church for Christmas, whatever it is, our baseball team is the first one there in line. Uh, and I'm so thankful, guys. to a terrific season of Purple Eagle Baseball out on Global Field. Um, just another great year out there at our new park, and we look forward to seeing everyone there. Enjoy your evening. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to bring up Tim Chaplin, Father uh, Vincent O'Malley. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank God and our parents for our healthy bodies, good minds, and deep passions that enable us to accomplish good things. We pray for good health and safety for all of our players, coaches, and even our own. We thank God for our athletic trainers and strength and conditioning coaches. We pray for our coaches. May they be smart in the plays they call, and may we be smart by doing what our coaches ask us to do. On offense, we pray that we might have hot bats and smart base running. On defense, we pray for golden glove fielding and laser light throwing to the correct base. We pray for our pitchers, that they might enjoy wide strike zones, <coughs> work with strikes than balls, and good fielding. We thank the field maintenance crew, administrators, faculty, staff, and students who support us. We pray for our generous donors. We pray for Second Lieutenant John Bobo, whose life inspires our daily lives. We thank God for the opportunity to play baseball here at Niagara University. God bless our meal and our conversations always. We make all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> 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 so How much time you got? <laughs> um, my God, this is, uh, it's been the most unbelievable four years for me. Um, the stuff that I've learned about myself and the amount that I've grown has been absolutely unbelievable. Uh, coming in here, like you don't realize how much the people around you are truly going to become family to you. Um, I, I, I can't even explain how much I love the guys, these other seniors out there and, and this whole team. Um, it really is the biggest blessing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And any advice for the younger guys on the team? Um, I would say you're not always going to be dealt the best hand. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs here. Uh, I, I've been through the ringer personally with a lot of different things, uh, injuries-wise, and I can tell you um, the one thing that always got me through everything was just uh, belief in yourself and enthusiasm and positivity. Um, those are things that no one can take away from you as a, as a person and as a player. Um, and just believing in yourself and, and, and never counting yourself out is something that can really go a long way in your time here, I'd say. Uh, to me, it's been the best experience of my life. Uh, I play with the 35 best friends every year, and uh, it's truly a blessing. Also, having coaches who want the absolute best for you is amazing. And it's just something that it's not just a four-year experience. It's a lifelong journey. Any advice for the younger guys on the team? Uh, just have fun. Obviously, uh, you come every day to work hard, and it's no, not always going to go, go your way. But at the end of the day, if you're having fun, that's all that matters. Uh, Niagara baseball has been my entire life the past four years, and uh, you know it's truly sad that it's it's finally coming to an end. But you know I'm grateful to have uh, been given the opportunity to come in and work in an environment you know that really helped me truly grow into the person I am today. Any advice for the younger players? Uh, work hard, be resilient, uh, embrace and chase struggle. Um, in those hard times, I've I've grown personally, and I know um, even though it might might seem tough in the moment, you're truly becoming a better person of yourself. Um, Enjoy the time with your teammates. Uh, it goes quick, but uh, at the end of the day, it, it's the four best years of your life, and enjoy it. So what does Niagara baseball mean to you? 
Well, Niagara Baseball has a way of bringing in the most competitive, energetic players. And when these guys are immersed in such a championship culture, we really see something special. And that's what I've seen in four years here. Um, every team's been unique, but every team's been equally exciting. And I'm just looking forward to getting after it one last time. Any advice for the younger guys on the team? Um, I'd say the most important thing is just to contribute to the culture. If everybody does their part to make the team a little bit better, then um, everybody's going to see the benefits from it, and the whole team's just going to keep getting better. So what does Niagara Baseball mean to you? Um, Niagara Baseball uh, was a fantastic experience. Uh, it has been so far. Um, I've met lifelong friends. Uh, I've been able to prepare for my future. Um, I've met dozens of amazing people who have taught me amazing lessons um, that have helped me grow on and off the field. Um, and I feel really privileged to be able to be a part of it. Um, the main advice that I would give them would be that it doesn't last forever. Uh, my time has gone by super quick and uh, it's going to come a time where you're going to have to hang up the cleats. So make the most of what time that you have and, and go all out. So what does Niagara Baseball mean? Baseball in Niagara has been a good experience. I give a lot of thanks to my entrenadores for recruiting me and helping me academically and athletically. Para mí todo esto ha sido un privilegio y le doy gracias a Dios por darme otro año más de béisbol colegial. Pues le digo que traten la cultura con mucho amor y cariño y que el tiempo corre y hay que aprovecharlo lo más pronto posible. This time, um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a student athlete perspective on uh, what four years has been like for me here at Niagara Baseball. Uh, first off, just a little background to kind of help paint the picture here. Uh, coming out of high school, I was a 5'10", 150 pound bean pole, called himself a catcher. Um, and uh, really, no one uh, wanted me per se at the Division I level, uh, except for one school. Um, Coach Pettiford and Coach McCoy saw me, um, and I was blessed enough to get a chance here. Um, you know, it, it means a lot uh, when someone believes in you. When you feel like you're completely by yourself and alone, and there's two guys um, that give you a chance. Um, I didn't think I was going to get that chance, and they gave me that chance. Uh, and over these four years, though there's been a lot of uh, ups and downs, um, I've had a lot of injuries um, personally. I haven't really been all that healthy a lot of the time. Um, but even through all that, those two guys uh, believed in me. They didn't throw me to the curb or say, you know, get out. Like, they gave me that chance um, four years ago, and they stuck to it. And I think, I think that that's part of what makes Niagara Baseball so special. Is the guys here, the co led by the coaching staff, uh, and the unbelievable people that put this program together. Uh, it's about belief. Everyone believes in each other. Everyone knows the work that everyone else has put in to be at this point. And uh, 
that's the thing, the, the thing that I find most special about this particular team. No one on this team is going to give up. Not one guy. Everyone is going to give everything they got every pitch because I've seen it for the last six months. More than I ever have in my entire life with any team. And um, one thing that I wanted to read to you all is something that I have on my bedroom door. Uh, I've had for a couple years now. Um, it's a letter that actually uh, Tom Brady wrote. And I've told these guys before, uh, I always quote Tom Brady, but um, I read it to them almost every year. And it, I just think it's the most telling thing um, for pretty much everyone. Because when I was thinking about what I was going to say, the only word that kept coming to my mind was grateful. Uh, and I think that this fits the bill. If you happen to be very lucky, when you are 10 years old, you will have people in your life who tell you the world is anything you want it to be, and you'll believe them. And those people will never put limits on your abilities. In return, no matter the circumstances, you always try your best and you never give up, because that's what you do when you're chasing your dream. If you're lucky, you have family, teammates, coaches, mentors, and trainers along the way that help you when you lose faith in yourself. And they will give you the strength to carry on. If you're lucky, you may get picked last, you may ride the bench, and many times the team may move on without you. And you come to recognize that in return, you are given the chance to earn the greatest edge of all, and one that can never be taken away. Will and heart. To anyone who feels left out or is afraid of trying their best for fear of failure, you are not alone. The magic you're looking for is in the will of trying and not giving up. The love of your dream is in your heart. One day, you will look back on your life and appreciate the struggle and have nothing but gratitude for everything that happened along the way. To anyone who is struggling early in the morning or late at night in pursuit of your dream, struggles that many will never see. And to any leaders out there who believe in someone who doesn't yet believe in themselves, keep going, keep going, because will always finds a way. And I think that perfectly describes this Niagara baseball team of 2020. We're never going to go away. We're never going to quit. And this team is going to be the first team. I'm here to say it. I have no doubts about this. First team to win a MAC championship here for the Niagara baseball team. And we're going to do a hell of a lot more than just that. Secret. We, you know, Spatty and I have worked a long time to basically fill a room full of guys we like to be around. It always, it's, everything's always better when it's when it's like that. So um, that was our goal. It's been a it was a challenge at first, but the more guys like that you get, the easier it becomes. And we got some guys sitting over here that started that um, a long time ago. Uh, I guess a little bit uh, It seems like it, uh, but. I'm just, I'm just honored. Everyone in this room, I'm honored by uh, you guys can continuing to come back year after year. I mean, this this raffle that Michelle uh, basically did, 
organized herself. Uh, she had some help with, for some other parents, and then all the families chipped in with baskets and donations and all kinds of stuff. And I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get any better than that. It's amazing. It's amazing what you guys what you guys do. And you know, sometimes when I'm in the middle of it, it seems like you know I'd rather be focusing on winning ga a game in three weeks. But it, I'm, I mean, there's so much that that. Uh, that gets done behind the scenes that I'm so thankful for, so I appreciate that. Um, so, I'm gonna, I got a couple things to talk about here, but one thing is, you know, I always I always brag about the guys uh, and how we did in the fall and all that stuff. I mean, the, the, we did things a little bit differently, um, which I thought you guys were going to talk about. Um, <laughs> from a player's perspective. Uh, so for a long time, we, I've, I've thought and we've, we've talked about, you know, how do we how do we change the way we we train? Basically, how do we change the way we're prepared? Because I never really felt good about, um, you know, guys late, he he gets sent home, or you know, guys wearing the wrong clothes, so he gets sent home. They're not in practice, and no one feels good about it. So to be honest with you, I mean, I, I'm really glad that I've, that I've been blessed to have some time in Niagara to, to figure out how to coach because I, I don't know if I would have been successful if I would have gotten a job and had three years to figure it out, so I've been blessed. Um, but finally figured out that, you know, through grinding and, 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 and learning and all kinds of stuff that, you know, that the competition drives, drives guys and um, rewarding drives guys instead of uh, you know, the way we were necessarily coached or trained or whatever that is. So it went great. I thought it went great. You, you know, the player, you'd have to ask the players. Um, you know, we went from, yeah, kind of a decent academically to really good academically to have 40 guys get a 3.48 combined. And I think we had, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> More than just it's more than just the three four eight. It, it, we had of, of thirty eight guys. I think we had twenty seven guys that were above a three eight. It was something ridiculous. Um, we had one four zero. Oh, we had one four zero. Oh. I always recognize those. So Joe, stand up. Joe, stand up. Yeah. And with the exchange rate, it's probably three eight. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's not uh, but it's just incredible. We, we were able to reward for extra work. We were able to reward for um, extra study hall. We didn't have study hall this year for the first time. We didn't, we didn't make them study. They basically got to do it. They got to do it for points for their team. They got to they got to do extra lifts. They got to do extra work. Um, so basically, their whole fall revolved around helping them win a competition, we had enough players, you guys probably would have liked that a lot better. I know, a couple years too late, sorry Darren. Um, it was a great fall, it, it was really, it felt good, I can tell you that, it felt good, rewarding guys for doing the right things, and I know, I know, it, it sounds crazy, that's a, not an original concept, but uh, it definitely did help. Um, having said that, I will announce, uh, I will announce the winner of the competition, nobody knows yeah, who, who did it? And it was it was stuff on the field. So every day we'd have points. We'd have points on the field uh, with competitions. It could be something very small. It could be something very big. Uh, there was ways to get points for doing crazy stuff. Like we had a guy, Cole Tucker, swim for the swim team because they needed a swimmer.
you start playing next time. So there was all kinds of ways to get points, and essentially, guys, it was it fell on guys' shoulders to to prove how they were they were going to help their team win. And so it was really neat to see who decided to do that and how they went about doing that. Um, Alex Julia, let me point this out because you guys, the players kind of already know that this happened, but Alex was out all. <laughs> he's conky, he's concussed. Um, but he was out all fall and couldn't do anything athletically related at all. And he, he, if he if, I didn't look at the exact points, but he finished almost first in points. And almost all of his points were just study hall points. So he couldn't help his team any other way than <coughs> going and, do, and studying. And he racked up almost 500 points himself just by studying. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I'll announce the going into the going into the GPA uh, competition. The, uh, the the purple team was winning, uh, but with the extra points from the GPA, the black team won. such a great legacy in community service um, in, in this in the greater Buffalo area and in baseball with St. Francis High School um, and so it uh, it was just natural that hey we sponsor the dinner we'll, and we'll always talk about Jeff and we'll always keep that alive so that's why we've added that uh, to the title of the dinner and that's why we're always going to talk about that and make sure that, that we get that done um, so they, they, they couldn't be here it happens to be Pat's son's senior night for hockey so it's, uh, we wish they could have been here and they, they sent their best wishes. So, um, Having said that, I'm going to read a couple things um, so that you guys kind of put the, the pieces together of who Jeff was. Uh, it's, it's an honor to hold this year's Niagara University Baseball first pitch dinner 
in memory of Jeff Scroy. Scroy graduated from West Seneca East in 1988 and walked on to the baseball team at Lemoyne before finishing his collegiate career at Niagara. Scroy was a Purple Eagle through and through, finishing his college baseball career with an all-conference season and graduating from Niagara in 1992. For 20 years, Scroy was a player and coach for West Seneca in a Muni League and spent nine years as an assistant baseball coach at St. Francis High School. The baseball field at St. Francis was renamed Jeff <coughs> Scroy Memorial Field <coughs> and was dedicated in 2017. Scroy was a leader in the community and was always giving back to others. He was a board member of the Boys and Girls Club of Orchard Park, as well as spent time <coughs> volunteering with the First Tee Program and Brian Mormon Fund Foundation. <coughs> Along with his late father, Joseph, Scroy founded Scroy Financial, a company that continues to carry on his legacy as active members of the community. The Jeffrey Michael Scroy Foundation also carries on the good work that Scroy did for the community. Since its inception in 2016, it has raised over a quarter of a million dollars to support some of the most cherished interests in the community. However, Scroy's impact on everyone he met is best described by an article written, written and published in the Buffalo News after his passing. He had three siblings while growing up in West Seneca, but he wasn't, he wasn't just their brother, he was everybody's brother. He was a communal treasure, an oversized man whose infectious, fun-loving personality revealed the little boy's soul. Scroy was, was shared because he was so willing to give he greeted people by hugging them, drawing them closer to his heart, rather than simply shaking hands. It's an example of how he operated. If compassion and selflessness were transported through osmosis, the world he left on February, February 3rd, 2016, would be a better place. So let's give Jeff Stroy a round of applause. statement from, from the guy, Jim Morrow, who coached him here. He said of Jeff, Jeff was a talented young man who loved the game of baseball. He was a good outfielder and a terrific hitter, middle of the order guy. He played the game the right way and was an intelligent player. Jeff transferred into Niagara after some, some things didn't work out at Lemoyne. I will never forget the grand slam he hit to beat the Dolphins at Lemoyne. He would just about broke my hand high-fiving me around third base. <laughs> Every time, every time I hear a story of Jeff Scroy, I, that's the story that's told. He left, he left Lemoyne, and the next time they played, he hit a grand slam. Um, Jeff could turn around a fastball as good as anyone. He goes on to say that Jeff's love of the game was evident as he eventually helped St. Francis High School as an assistant coach. Jeff comes from a wonderful family, and I'm so proud of his legacy he lives on at St. Francis Baseball. So we'll always, we'll always have this, uh, his, his memory as a part of this dinner now. Uh, it's an honor to Jeff because the more I find out about Jeff, the, uh, the, uh, the more impressive it is, okay? All right, now on to Big J. Jason, where are you? Give us a shout. <laughs> Not Coach Jason, no. <laughs> What's up, Jay? So we, so we had a young man come into our lives last fall uh, uh, through Team Impact. His name's Jason. And he's had a pro profound impact on our team. He, goes, he comes to games and practices, and our guys hang out with him. Um, they've done bowling and took him to a hockey game. They, uh, some guys went to his birthday. Uh, they, uh, some guys attended the Miracle League with him. And, uh, and he's just been a he's just been a tremendous addition to our team. We're really looking forward to uh, very soon having a signing ceremony so we can make him officially part of the Purple Eagles baseball team because it's just it's just paperwork at this point because he's been an integral part of of what we've done and he's he's just his his personality is infectious and we're so thankful that uh, that we get to be around him and have him around. So uh, everyone, give him give Jason a round of applause. season. Um, I'm not going to say it as good as Matt did, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think 
uh, everyone that's around the program close enough understands what, what we have in the room and what we're going to be capable of doing. And I, I'm really just, I, I, I haven't been more excited about getting these guys on the field and letting, letting them compete against the country's best. Uh, I, it's, uh, we've, got some, we've, got a, we've got some fun trips planned. We're opening in Florida State. Um, we get to go to North Carolina Central and play at the old, old Durham uh, field where the movie was filmed. Which I love that field. It's just an amazing, amazing field. Um, and then we get to take a west, a western, west coast trip. It's not really a west coast trip, but it's out there, a ways. So, yeah. so it'll be really neat for the guys to go out there. Um, the guys that, that have never been out in that type of that type of country. Uh, it's it's basically a homecoming for me. When we play Boise State, it's the closest, essentially the closest Division One school. Um, to where I grew up, and so I'll look forward to having family at my games probably for the first time ever, really. Um, the guys have worked incredibly hard, and I'm so proud of them, and every day it's fun to go to practice. And at the end of the day, if that's all we got, that's enough. So thank you guys for coming. Uh, we're going to do the raffle announcements now. I'm going I'm to have my uh, on. Joe and Matt come up. Players, uh, get, please get with Michelle. You guys are going to line up, grab a basket, come up. We'll pick, we'll pick that whatever was there. And then please make sure if you win something, you raise your hand high. You'll get it delivered to your table, and then we'll keep that train going.